going to demonstrate how to use Copic markers on my digital image of this bunny. I call Herbie. And I'm going to demonstrate how to do fur. So the first uh, color I've got here is E70. And I'm just going to go over the whole thing, just how you normally <laughs> use Copics with um, nice even strokes. Sometimes you can do little circles that helps you know have any lines of demarcation. I've got a fairly large uh, copy of the bunny just so that it's easy to film. But you can resize this any size you want because this is a digital image. So if you've got, uh, I think you can resize them in Word. You can resize them with, with any photo program. I've got Photoshop, so I use that. So then I've covered all this fur with E70, which is a nice light color. And now I'm coming in with E71. It's slightly darker, not by a whole lot. And take a look now. Try to get the close-up on this, this brush tip I'm using here. So I'm just making tiny wee little strokes to make uh, the look of fur. Wee little strokes for wee little folks. And I'm going to do this all over. I'm not worried about lighting right now of uh, where my light source is coming from for my drawing. I'll worry about that when I get into the darker shades. So this, this goes pretty much all over. Now, uh, I just want to show you over here. Um, just get a close-up of what I'm doing here, hon. So when I'm when I'm uh, making the stroke, I'm I'm just it's very very light. It's barely touching the paper. So you don't want to press like this because you're going to get really thick. You don't want that. That's that's too thick. Nice no, light. So very very light, barely touching the page. You get a nice thin little line. And nice little short lines. You don't have to do really long ones. Unless you want long ones, but you could if you want. But I don't. I want short ones for my bunny. Oh. <laughs> Aw, you're cute, Mom. Did you just snort? <laughs> yeah, I did. Do that again. <laughs> snort again for the camera. <laughs> snort for the camera. Snort for the camera. <laughs> oh. Now she's wheezing like an old woman. I can't laugh and color at the same time, okay? Okay. That's professional advice 101. <laughs> no laughing or having fun when you're coloring bunny rabbits. <laughs> oh, she's wheezing. She's wheezing like an old woman. <laughs> Look, oh, she just snorted. <laughs> Folks, this is gold. <laughs> How can I color? <laughs> you're not allowed to have fun when you color bunny rabbits. <laughs> It takes a bit of time going over the whole thing, but you'll see it wor is worth it. Makes it look all fuzzy. What's really important is to get all of the concentration, because as an artist you need to be really concentrated on what you're doing. Look at that concentration. <laughs> She's cracking under the pressure, but she'll do it. I have tears in my eyes from laughing. <laughs> this is really emotional stuff, people. <laughs> when you're working <laughs> with coloring little animals, sometimes it just gets to you. Fuzzy bunnies. And sometimes you cry a little tear. <laughs> Can I have a clear? This is Chrissy Armstrong on the job. Ashley, I don't want a, I don't want a video of me. I want the video of my. But you're so much more interesting. Of the strokes <laughs> I'm doing. That's the important part. People want to know how to use the markers. They don't care. They don't care about you. About me. They what don't. What kind of fans do you care. have? That's that's so insensitive. Do you actually care more about the markers than you do about my mom? I'm gonna pretend. My light source is the top right. I usually do. I don't know why I'm kind of in the habit of that. So most of my shadows will be on the left side of the bunny. And uh, I'll leave some places will be in shadow on this side, but not as many. So in making the same little tiny strokes. But this time, of course, we're not covering the whole bunny. Just the places where we believe there will be shadow. Little tiny strokes for little tiny folks. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Christine, while you're uh, coloring in shadow. I can't. I've got to concentrate. Oh, 
Tip number two, Artist 101. You can't talk about yourself when you're doing art because you have to concentrate. Take it seriously. <laughs> Don't making, laugh. You're making me Google. Again. No giggling or laughing. I'm, I think there's going to be a bit of shadow on coming under his chinish area. Like, it's not really his chin, but kind of. No, look how cute. So he's starting to take on some dimension now. I'll emphasize it even more with E77, you'll see. This is only E74. Just remembering that the light source is coming from the top left, so there's more shadows on the right. And more shadows, and I'm thinking this, this will help his mouth and chin look like they're protruding a little bit by putting a little bit of shadow underneath it. You see how that works? Whatever you leave light, that's what's going to look like it's uh, more... Uh, what's the word? It's coming out at you more, giving it that dimension. Just a little bit along the edges on this side. And now we're really going to emphasize the shadows with my E77 color. So just a wee bit, because um, it's a really strong brown. So you don't want to have a whole lot, because it's very, very dark. See how that really brings out the dimension of the bunny? Of the bunny. Furby. Just a wee bit on the ears. Cheek. Well, you can leave it like that if you want to. But I prefer to take go back to E70 and go over the whole area because I like to soften it a little bit because you've got really strong lines of demarcation on it. So by going back over it with E70, all over, get a good shot of me doing this on here, you really soften the picture up quite a bit. You see how that blends in? It blends it, but it doesn't blend it completely, so. And I'm just leaving the outer edges not touched because that way they'll be nice and, and bright, looking like a highlight. So you've still got some lines of demarcation, but they're just not as pronounced. Do you see how that works? So he looks pretty soft. That's so cool. So now I'm gonna add a little pink on his ears. I'm using R21. Do that nose. I want to give the nose a bit of dimension, so I'm going to add a couple more colors. Um, this is R22, which is the same shade or color, only it's a little deeper of a shade. Remembering that the light comes from this side, I'm putting most of the shadows on the left. And a little bit at the base of the ear. And then back in with R21 to blend them together. Just a wee bit of a blend. And to even uh, emphasize the shade, the shadow a little bit more, take um, I'm using C3, which is a cool gray, just a wee bit. See how that really gives the nose a shape. I'm just using the same strokes, but I, I can actually press a little bit harder now. Yes, yeah, so I'm just pressing a little bit more because this is these paws are really big and I, I want the fur to look bigger. So I'm making these kind of strokes on the paws. I want to blend that gray because it's a little too um, strong. So I'm going to use C1. C1. It's better if you say it like that. Look at how that blends. I just love Copic markers for their blendability. It's beautiful. We're almost done. I just want to blend those out and then I'm going to say ta-da, we're done. There. Hang on. Hold that. Hold that. I'm just getting a really close shot of the bunny. So that's the way to do fur. 
with Copic markers.